quite a palpable tension here. Uh, people are uh, definitely uh, agitated because of uh, the manner in which the government has entered into an MOU uh, in resolving the long-pending contentious uh, areas of difference along the assam Meghalaya border. You will recall that uh, the government of Meghalaya has actually called a meeting of all the political parties to discuss about the approach adopted in respect of resolving this contentious, long pending issue of interstate boundary related matter with Assam. And uh, the irony is that only after an MOU was signed with the counterpart, the political parties were invited. That is the time when we have protested. If you have already signed an MOU, what is there? You have been asked to be very transparent because we have to revisit the genesis, as to the genesis of these areas of difference in respect of those areas pertaining to the areas of difference along the assam Meghalaya border. What is the background? The background is that after the interstate border was demarcated by Survey of India, post Northeast Reorganization Act 1971, people of the state of Meghalaya have refused to accept. Okay. Now, what is the basis? The basis is that the land in Meghalaya do not belong to the state government. The land belong to the people. We have Himas, we have Dolois, we have Akhans in respect of Garo Hills. So all these land belong to uh, different CMC in, the, in respect of Khas Hills, different Akhang lands in respect of Garo Hills, and different Dolois in respect of Jaintia Hills. Therefore, Based on this, if you relook at the Northeastern Reorganization Act 1971, the creation of Meghalaya is completely clear in as far as the pronouncement of the area is concerned. The area falling under, I'm making it in a simpler term so that everybody will understand. The areas falling within the jurisdiction of United Khasi Zainthiyas Autonomous District Council and the areas falling within the Garo's Autonomous District Council shall form the part of the state of Meghalaya. Mm. Now, all these areas forms part of the areas within, well within, well within the jurisdiction of United Khasi Jainjai's Autonomous District Council. So also the rest in the western part. Therefore, if you want to look at the border, you have all the revenue records available from pre-independence time from the time of the British era. Therefore, whether you are talking about the areas along Kanapara, Pilankata, that exists, which falls under your uh, CMC of Himamelim, they have their own land records, the revenue records, based on which it is crystal clear which forms part of Meghalaya. Similarly, this side, this is uh, falling under the Hima Nonglang Sardar Sea. So every village have their headmen who receive sanat from the Himas. That is a delegation of power to govern inconsistent with the provision of six rule of the Constitution of India. You will appreciate the fact that we also have, besides the ownership over the land, we also have the responsibility and the power mandated by the provision of the six rule of Constitution for governing, for administration of justice. Therefore, any nokma, for that matter, who is issued sanat has the delegation of power to embark upon all his responsibility in consistent with the administration of justice, based on our traditional customary laws and practices. And that is part of our culture. That is part of our way of life. Now, the ownership over the land forms our cultural heritage. The Hima, whether it is, whether you're talking about Himas elsewhere, not even uh, within the uh, along the border of Assam, they have own own jurisdiction. So therefore, the government is not the owner of the land. Number one, therefore, the government doesn't have the right to give a consent or assent for alienation of any land from within that particular Hima. Okay. Because that land belongs to the jurisdiction within well, well within the administrative jurisdiction of the Hima. Please understand that the Himas also, the Akhanglands and Dolois also have 
the both administrative power and administrative responsibilities in as far as administrating the land and resources are concerned. Therefore, in the instant case when the government of Meghalaya is signing, inking an MOU with uh, some counterpart, have they taken cognizance of this aspect? Because if they have signed an MOU to allow certain villages which were in integral part of these Himas, that means there will be alienation of land from the Himas. There will be alienation of land from the six rural area. Now, if there is an alienation of land or transfer of land, land means assets, resources, land resources, only the owner can sign. If you're the owner of a property, if your property has to be transferred to somebody, you have to sign, no? Nah? Yes. Nobody can sign on your behalf. If somebody's property has to be uh, transferred to somebody, then uh, the proper, uh, transfer of property act applies. So similarly here, who is the owner here? They have to understand. That's why I have said that there is a complexity associated with this long pending contentious problem pertaining to the areas of difference along Assam and Meghalaya border. One has to try to have an in-depth understanding about this problem. Now, if I am uh, in your uh, in your Akhangland, in your Hima, I cannot decide on my own to say that, okay, I want to be in Assam, then there will be an alienation of land from that Hima. Who am I to actually have the power to alienate that land? You know, so the approach itself has been wrong. That is what I have been saying from the day one. The approach that you have adopted as a government is completely wrong. And it is complete uh, manifestation of lack of in-depth understanding about the problems or issues related to resolving land issue. Here, resolving land issue means you will have to talk to the land owners. The land owners who belong, uh, means land owners, the clan. Here, if you are talking about Hima Milim, you have to talk about Hima Milim. Their darbar will decide. They also used to have the national darbar. You know? Similarly, every Hima has their own power in administration of their land and resources, inconsistent with all the customary laws and practices. Therefore, today we are here uh, in Malang. Now, another thing. There are areas of difference where the stand of the state has to be indicated that this particular land which is being claimed by Assam is within, well within the boundary of one particular area. Say, for example, as I have referred to, under this CMC, under this HIMA, so there is a, a complete clarity. And there are areas where we never had any dispute. Now, the areas which are not considered as areas of difference or outside the areas of dispute are well within Meghalaya. That means there is no dispute. Dispute. Now, even the areas where there is no dispute, which is well within Meghalaya, those are the areas also which are in the process of their negotiation and the so-called infamous give-and-take policy they have adopted there to divide the land. Now, they are trying to resolve pertaining to six areas of difference. Out of the 12 areas, only the six areas of difference. On the day one, I have said that, please don't proceed ahead with this piecemeal approach. And the other parameters which you are adopting in the whole uh, methodology and the approach. Because once you do that, that means you are infringing upon the power and responsibility of our traditional institutions. Yes. Am I clear on that? Therefore, the areas which were not uh, in dispute, which were well within Meghalaya, and who have always been... Uh, well within the administrative control of Meghalaya, even they are now being pushed to Assam. And another part is, even though there may be different people from ethnic background, may not be belonging to the indigenous ethnic background, but mm -hmm. they are well within the jurisdiction of that Hima. That means they are an integral part in respect of that particular Hima. How can you eliminate that? Okay, but you cannot MD alienate that. Okay, but the MDM government said that they went through this MOU as per your uh, map draft by your government. What is your clarify? If you're talking about the areas of difference, the areas of difference and the claim, our job is to indicate to Assam by substantiating our claim through available records which pertains to revenue records. 
Now, when we talk about the revenue records, you all have the revenue records. Every Hima has the revenue records, which goes back to, you know, pre-independence time. Based on this, we have documented and submitted. These these areas of difference which you are claiming is ours. These 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 areas which you are claiming is ours. That is the documentation which has been submitted to Assam government in the month of August 2011. Okay. Now, what I am saying is that you have to understand that outside, even outside, those areas which are well within the state of Meghalaya, which were not part of the disputed areas, are also being tracked and clubbed. This is another matter of concern. Okay. And if you are looking at, again, the villages which they are dividing amongst themselves, 36 square kilometer of areas of difference in respect of these six areas of difference, they are dividing into 18, 18 square kilometer. By two meetings, they have already completed this exercise. This is how you will be able to resolve these uh, areas of difference. Now, while they try to do so, so many villages which are part of our claim has been transferred to Assam. So many villages. Somewhere the same village is being divided into two. Mm -hmm. You are seeing it in Kanapara. You are seeing it in Maikuli. You are seeing it in many villages. They are dividing even one village. On what basis? The give and take means you want to divide 50-50 percent. How will you give the land which belongs to the Hima? How will you give the land which belongs to the people? The land does not belong to government. Okay. That's why this is the complexity associated. Now, Assam government understand it very well. Hemanta Biswa Sarma understand it very well. But Conrad probably doesn't understand this. <laughs> yes. That's why they want to expeditiously complete this whole process. Because when they can do it during the time when Conrad is in the helm of affairs of governance, they can have their field day. This is exactly what is actually a matter of concern. Our job is to tell them that what you are doing is wrong. I have said so outside the house, inside the house. I have cautioned them, don't go with this approach. This is completely unacceptable and it is a dangerous threat. You are allowing alienation of our six scheduled land. You are deciding to alienate the land which belongs to the clan, which belongs to the community, which belongs to the people. Please remember one thing. The moment these areas are allowed to be part of Assam, our people will become landless. Our generation next will become landless. We have already seen it in other parts of the state, where our Garos used to be the predominant uh, inhabitants. Villages have disappeared. So please understand the overall serious fallout which revolves around, you know, the future identity of our people. Okay, what step will you take against this? You will have to again re revisit how the areas of difference have cropped up. When people don't accept, then area of difference remains. We don't accept it. People don't accept it. That means the areas of difference remains. It is not resolved. Okay. Because even after Northeast Reorganization Act 1971, when Survey of India has demarcated the border, Assam Meghalaya border, people have not accepted it. It is after an enactment of an act. Still, people didn't accept it because people wanted to protect the leaders then, our <coughs> senior and rather our predecessors, wanted to protect the interests of our people in sync with the responsibility that is expected of us, the responsibility that is vested upon us. And we will sincerely fulfill our responsibility.